You're listening to the Casting for Fun podcast, the show that talks about entertainment, sports, music, and inspirational stories for all to enjoy. We're glad you could join us today. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Now, here is your host, Albert Pineda. Welcome, everyone, to the Casting for Fun podcast. I'm your host, Albert Pineda. And for this week's episode, I'm going to be sitting down to chat with several of my good buddies, uh, Nick Turner and Sean Lovano, who have been on the show before, and Eddie Ramirez, who will be on the show for the first time. I haven't seen or talked to Eddie in, in quite, a, quite a while, so it's actually really exciting for me to get the chance to talk with him. And we're going to be talking about spoilers, massive spoilers for The Batman, starring uh, Robert Pattinson and uh, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, starring Benedict Cumberbatch and uh, Elizabeth Olsen. Uh, so it should be really cool, really fun conversation to talk about stuff like that. I, I love uh, genre entertainment, so I'm very excited for that. And just a quick update or a quick, uh, uh, I need to yeah, do an update for the episode. During our conversation, Sean asked me if there was any future plans for Daredevil uh, to be used in the, the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And what actually happened was at the time, I didn't know if there was any future plans. Then like the day after we record, uh, it's officially announced by Variety, The Hollywood Reporter, several other like prominent entertainment news sites that uh, Marvel Studios and Disney are in fact uh, developing a Disney Plus show for Daredevil, which is really exciting. I can't wait for that. So here we go. This is my conversation with Nick, Sean and Eddie about the Batman and the Multiverse of Madness. Welcome, everybody, to the Casting for Fun podcast. I'm your host, Albert Pineda, and this is episode 21 of the show. Uh, joining me uh, is uh, fifth time on the show, Nick Turner. Uh, third time on the show, Sean Lovano. What it do? And first time on the show, Eddie Ramirez. I'm hoping this will be the first of many for you, Eddie. Oh, Should man, we- you popped my cherry already, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. So today we're going to be discussing uh, spoilers, massive, massive spoilers for the Batman with uh, Robert Pattinson and massive spoilers for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. And we'll just kind of see where the conversation goes. I mean, just when we get friends together like this talking like nerdy geek stuff, I mean, you can go anywhere. So <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, very cool. OK, so let's go ahead and uh, jump right into it. Unless anyone else had anything they want to bring up or mention, discuss really fast. Yeah, I think we saw a event together. Just to go back, I thought at the AMC. Am I right? Ooh, AMC 30. Yeah, I swear. Um, you were, the, you guys were going and hopped along to watch it with you. I remember right? Yeah, it was. Um... Yeah, it was AMC 30. I mean, Sean, mm-hmm. he's a he was he's a big advocate of that that theater. I mean, that was a time where we didn't have to reserve seats or anything. It was way in line and we're all there for the midnight showing. That was the only showing that you could go to on a Thursday before anything else. And yeah, man, it was good vibes. So I think I, I miss that. I miss the I miss the grind of sweating. Hoping you get a good seat. <laughs> Someone yeah, I'm trying actually, to reserve seats for yeah. you. Yeah, I'm actually call I'm off because uh, I prefer like the, today the way it is now, like that uh, that you have showings as early as six p.m. and that you reserve your seat ahead of time, so I can just show up like ten minutes before. <laughs> All right, no, the convenience is yeah is yeah. definitely <laughs> a, a big plus. I mean, we could do so many things up until the last minute, but and I I think it was always that excitement of. Uh, the win in line part, I think what it was, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. For I, sure. I man. think every, especially uh, nerds and geeks that, that you find that movie that you waited so long for, you hype yourself up in your own head. Uh, what could be, what could happen. And then you talk about it the whole line and until they let you in and then you just kind of like cheer in, you know, and then you get your popcorn and whatever snacks and all that good stuff. So. Oh yeah. yeah absolutely. That was a good, that was a good little plus back then, but I don't, I do appreciate the the soft recliners now. I think we all enjoy those. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. And getting to order uh, food straight to your your chair, so you don't have to mm. even get up. Just like order on the app really fast, and they send it to you. 
<laughs> spoiled bike uh, we have now. Uh, look at us <laughs> dating ourselves. <laughs> okay, but uh, speaking of that dating show, ourselves, like, hey, so, we, uh, we along with the uh, chatting about the, the Batman with Robert Pattinson, I actually wanted to like go over all the Batman movies. I mean, not like in, in depth, but just kind of have a general conversation on Batman, which because I think that'd be a really cool topic to discuss. But first and foremost, let's go ahead and jump in again. Massive spoilers for the Batman with Robert Pattinson. Uh, before we jump in, I wanted to just give like a brief history of the movie. And it's kind of funny that we're talking about the multiverse of madness afterwards. In a different universe, we could have gotten a much, much different Batman movie. Uh, because what happened was that uh, uh, when Ben Affleck was cast, he was actually also cast to be a uh, star in his own and direct and co-write his own solo Batman movie. But then several things happened along the way. He ended up dropping out of director, but was still going to start. I was still going to star. Uh, uh, Matt Reeves, who had done the, the Planet of the Apes movies, the recent ones, he was going to be directing. In fact, he directed. Uh, but then I guess a lot of personal stuff got in Ben Affleck's way, like uh, uh, rehab for alcoholism, uh, his divorce to Jennifer Gardner. And I think like the, the negative fan reaction to Batman v Superman and the Justice League kind of maybe like uh, disheartened him a little bit. So I guess yeah. Warner Brothers decided to just scrap it, just uh, uh, rewrite a whole new script. Uh, recast a new Batman for this particular movie. Uh, so yeah, we got a much different Batman movie than I guess the, the executives or Warner Brothers initially had planned. But it's actually interesting. Uh, to me, it kind of seems that the fan backlash wasn't as bad for Pattinson as it was for, for Affleck, which I think is kind of strange and weird. You think it would have been worse. Uh, and then Sean briefly mentioned to me that he actually thought this was like his top three, one of his top three Batman movies. So the Batman movie we got was a pretty interesting and, uh, and actually I thought was really good. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. What were your initial thoughts of uh, the Batman with Robert Pattinson? Did anybody 15 want to jump into, in? 15 minutes into it, um, I was sitting to Eddie and I told him, we said how like, this is going to be amazing. It's already probably one of the best Batmans 15, 20 minutes in. Yeah, awesome. uh, I'm just going to echo that. I, Sean and I had, you know, that privilege of just seeing it opening week, you know, where the, the hype is still there. We, we dodged all the spoilers online. We did our homework in terms of trying to stay clean going into the movie. And I remember just sitting there and Sean and I, yeah, five, ten minutes in, you know, like, you, you get the, you get Pat Panson as Bruce, right? He's narrating the opening scene. He's setting the premise of the whole movie of, you know, what Gotham is as a huge scale. It's a character in its own right. It's, it's gritty, it's dark, What you know, he's painting the canvas. And as you're watching the visuals go, like, I hadn't even seen an opening like that of any superhero movie where it just felt like you are already ingrained in the world right away. And I looked at Sean and he looked at me and we giggled like nerds, like this movie is crazy. Like we're in, I'm in, show me the rest of these two hours and 50 minutes. Let's go. It was, it was a really cool setup for what we, what would then come. And I think right away, um, Twilight wasn't even a thought anymore. Like, there's no more of yeah. that. Hansen, <laughs> at least by voice up to that point. Like, all right, you're my you're my Batman. I'm in. I like. I still have a hard time believing Batman. He's still just kind of yeah, too weak for me. But the movie, I still have a hard time just him. Eh. He was better than he was back in the day, but uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. Eh, just a hard pill to swallow. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's understandable. In fact, I mean, I kind of had the same reservations. Uh, this this one was one of the few movies I didn't go to the theater to see. But I mentioned to Nick before, like I'm kind of like picky and choosy as to which ones I go to because we have to get sitters. So. Uh, it's kind of like a, a, an odyssey just to get to the theater now. So I'm usually very particular as to what I go see. And um, so I figured, yeah, I'll wait till it's on HBO Max. But I was tracking the days, like as soon as it was announced, okay, it's going to be released on this day on HBO Max. If you want to stream it, 
in your own home. Uh, so Allison and I watched it together. Uh, it ended up taking us like three nights because it's so long. <laughs> but right. uh, but to be honest, I mean, I, I thought it was excellent. I thought it was really good. Um, you know, when you talk about the other Batmans, like, you know, oftentimes you'll sit because there's been six uh, actors to play in live action. So you'll say, OK, maybe this actor did, you know, good, good with Bruce, but maybe not as good with Batman or vice versa. This one did good with Batman, maybe not as good with Bruce. Uh, Pattinson, I think he had a really good look for, for Batman. And uh, his Bruce Wayne, I think, wasn't quite as good, but his Batman was really good, I thought, in my opinion. And what was interesting about this movie was that he's Batman for the vast majority of the movie. Like, you don't see him as much as Bruce Wayne, which is kind of uh, different from the other Batmans right. that we've seen. So that was an interesting take, I thought. What I liked about I think that was Robin a... Pat. Mm-hmm. I was just saying that, that it was more Batman than Bruce. Mm-hmm. What what I liked about the Bruce Wayne part about Rob Patterson is that you f- you see and you felt that he was damaged, like you see that he was reclusive, like Christopher Nolan's uh, uh, Batman with Christian Bale is awesome, you know, but he was gallivanting and, and you know in these parties and showing off. Whereas, you know, according to the comics, like Bruce Wayne's all to himself, you know, doesn't want anything the outside world type of deal and. I think Rob Pattinson just uh, did that part of Bruce Wayne very, very well. And I do, I really do enjoy, because you've always seen Batman as like this like strong man, um, you know, uh, like he did in the comics. But I think for being like a damaged person, like Bruce Wayne, like I think Rob Pattinson, I think does a great job of seeing this like weak individual, like find strength in himself and in his ability, you know? I thought that was, I thought yeah. that's why, that's why for me, Rob Patterson was a great Batman. How about the the rest of the cast? Like, so you got uh, um, Andy Serkis as Alfred. Uh, I don't know the actor who played uh, the Riddler in the movie, uh, but then also, um, I forget his name, but uh, he- Colin Farrell? In, I'm sorry, what? Colin Farrell's Penguin. Oh, Colin Farrell was Penguin. Yeah, it really. Uh, Paul Dano. Yeah, that was great. Riddler. Oh, Paul hey, thanks, Dano. Eddie. Thanks, Eddie. Yeah. Uh, so the rest of the cast, what did you guys think? I think uh, Penguin was probably the, the best character, to be honest. Yeah, when I was That's watching it with my was... wife, she kept saying, like, who is that guy? Who is that guy? I'm like, oh, I don't know. So let me uh, uh, look it up on my MDB. And Oh, it's Colin Farrell. And she said, no, that's not Colin Farrell. Yeah. So we ended up looking yeah. up a YouTube video where they showed the whole like uh, prosthetic makeup transformation he had to go through. And we were both blown away. I was like, wow, that was actually pretty good. <laughs> even the voice, even the voice. I mean, you couldn't even tell it's Colin Fro. You know, I thought it was really good. And I love that Penguin was a gangster. You know, he was at some fish eating mm-hmm. dude in the, you know, in the sewers. I thought that was very done very, very well. And um, I believe uh, they're coming out with the Penguin series with Colin Fro. Am I correct? Yeah, that, that's true. Like that his own spinoff on thing. HBO Max. But that being said, though, Sean, like I, I just love Danny DeVito and everything he does. So yeah, the fish eating penguin that he plays, I think, is still funny and cool. <laughs> yeah, a good I... point. Oh yeah, go for it. Go Ready? For it, like, there's fan or me that I didn't read the comic, and so I don't have to. Uh, just watch the cartoon movies and so i just want to point out like i do respect those from that have that perspective of growing up with the comics and relating like i thought overall and really i think it's interesting the debate um standing kind of the two sides to it let me go ahead eddie oh man that's that's a that's actually something i want to get kind of get into but just to i also first start off with what, what Albert started us off with. Uh, Jeffrey Wright was actually my favorite character or uh, actor. And so as uh, as Jim Gordon, I think uh, just, I mean, this is Batman a year two. So Batman a year two is, is a year off from, you know, whatever he showed off to the world in that world, right? So now in year two, it's like, who is this guy? Like, is he really with us or not? Is he just a vigilante? Is he crazy like all these other, uh, like the Riddler, whoever are the other future bad guys of this uh, franchise? And like, 
what I really like what Jeffrey Wright brought as Jim Gordon was he is losing faith mm-hmm. in, in Gotham, but he's finding his void filled through Batman because Batman is representing in his eyes a strength of hope. Like there is still people willing to be crazy enough, still go and try and do me crazy with crazy, but in terms of good. And oddly enough, I trust this guy who dresses like a bat over this guy that's dressed in all blue, the cop next to me that I went to the academy with. You know, that's like the mindset that that Jim Gordon brings to this. And the symbiotic relationship, like you've always, maybe like in the cartoon series, right? You'll see Jim Gordon and Batman kind of like talk through kind of like that that back and forth, figuring out the, you know, what, what the case is about, but we never really see it in a movie and to actually see them like go back and forth, share a thought like, Oh, maybe this isn't it. Or is this the clue? Is this, is this that just that bouncing around? I had never seen Batman and, and Jim Gordon actually display that on TV like that. And that was one of my, probably the favorite part of the movie. And there's a lot of good things about this movie but I really see that as the big standout is uh, Jim Gordon just being that cop that's, you know, he's moving up himself. He's not commissioner yet. And you get to see him be that. He ju- he's just above a B cop, but he's not at that top level of sense of security in terms of like, oh, he's the commissioner. He's, he's the guy you go to. He's still working his way up and he has a vigilante that it's kind of leaning on to get there. And it's really cool to see that. Oh, I absolutely agree. In fact, uh, going along the lines of what you were just talking about, Eddie, uh, in this movie, I think it was uh, maybe one of the better, if not the best uh, portrayals of Batman as a detective. Uh, and, you know, in the comics, he's often mm. referred to as the, the world's yep. greatest detective. Uh, and depending on, you know, who you ask in the fandom, I mean, it could be debate between either him or Sherlock Holmes as to who's really the best. But uh, uh-huh. yeah, I like this, the detective work that, that they put into for Batman. Uh, I thought was really, really excellently done in this movie. Well, ha- oh yeah, go, go, Dick. Have you guys seen it? What was that? Sorry? It's, uh, how many of you guys seen it? Just once or twice? Um, just once for me. Just once for me. Yeah. Oh man, I'm six. <laughs> No, I've minutes. only seen it once. I've only seen it once too. I want to watch it because I think I'll like it the more I watch it. It it grows. I will say, don't watch it late. Don't start watching it late. Give yourself a nice time. Uh, start at <laughs> early afternoon. Make sure you got your, all your priorities in life done so that we could just get that block of three hours ready to go. But I, it does grow on you. I think it's one of those movies where when you go back and watch it, there are little like details that maybe you didn't catch the first time because it's a big info drop of three hours. And you, I think you appreciate it the more and more you watch it because you start seeing other things about it. Maybe things you didn't like that still you don't like, or maybe things that you do like, but now, oh, that's why they went that route or whatever. And I, I did like that. It, it was nice. No. Six times. Nice. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, so then with the 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 tease at the very end that potentially lighting, uh, setting up the the Joker coming in, do you guys like that? Like with this uh, this newer take on how they're going to be portraying Batman now with the Joker being the next villain, would you want to see uh, uh, Bat Reeves use like different different villains? Uh, one thing we haven't mentioned yet that I guess at CinemaCon last month in Las Vegas, uh, Warner Brothers did officially announce a sequel with Pattinson coming back to star and Matt Reeves coming back to direct. So, yeah, I mean, they're so, I mean, Batman has a plethora of villains that they can use. Some not so good, but some really cool and some that haven't been used on screen yet. So it would be interesting to see if they, I mean, my guess is with the tease, we will see Joker. But if we see more uh, villains protect, maybe even villains we haven't seen on screen yet. Uh, Well, I think the Joker would be cool, but I'm I'm partial to to Penguin because I'm a huge fan of Colin Farrell. So we see more yeah. of him. But I think I would actually really like for them to somehow 
incorporate uh, Mr. Freeze. I want to see how Matt Reeves would do that in this kind of Batman. You know, because I, I wonder, because it's always been kind of cheesy and very cartoony, but I just wonder if uh, Mr. Freeze could be like Rumors the are out there like, about it. Yeah, you know, Rumors like the, the, the right whole, now, about the whole the thing was the whole Gotta thing with Riddler. One like, up the old. Like, yeah, right? Like, this guy's psychotic. And you, we saw um, Joaquin Phoenix's uh, Joker. That was a little scary, you know? So it's just like, I wonder if he could do it with a character like Mr. Freeze. Well, I mean, Mr. Freeze's backstory is like very tragic. Like, you know, he, yeah, he, he committed right? a crime to save, save his yeah. life. So mm-hmm. it'd be interesting to see him do some type of take on that. Like, you know, he, he's absolutely broken man, destroyed, defeated because of his wife's illness. And then, I mean, because the animated show does an excellent job, I think, of portraying Mr. Freeze. So. So something along those lines, I think it'd be cool if they were to use him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mr. Freeze, um, the first Batman movie that he did, eh, wasn't that they could do better. (laughs) That movie was okay. It wasn't great. (laughs) All over the top. You mocker ruined my childhood. (laughs) They did did that to make the McDonald's toys so happy meals. Nick, I just have one question for you. (laughs) Right? How did the dinosaurs die? (laughs) <laughs> the ice age see even i could not make uh, oh arnold we love thee uh, oh man i haven't heard that in a long time like oh. since the movie came out Ooh. it's ingrained it's an yeah. imprint it'd be interesting imprint. though <laughs> right I think so that's what i, I mean think- like they could definitely do better oh i i think at this point sky's the limit i mean yeah. Um, I would say, uh, let's, I mean, let's, let's use Riddler, for example. I mean, I love Jim Carrey as an actor and for what role he was given and the script he was given. I mean, I'll be honest, I still enjoyed what he did in Batman Forever, but we, we make Riddler like a realistic bad guy in terms of like using social media to connect in the dark web. And he's like just a normal looking guy. He doesn't have to have scars or anything. He's just kind of psycho. Like, yeah. imagine how they, they elevated the Riddler, a guy who just does, you know, puzzles to then connect that to, you know, a serial killer that, that from the 90s and all that. Like, I me- they elevated him to that level. Imagine what they could do with the Mr. Freeze, a guy who's desperate to save his wife and a man who's desperate to do whatever it takes and who's intelligent, he's a doctor, and then make that into some psycho realm thing Uh, who knows you know what they can cook up like i think in this world they're allowing a lot of elbow room for untapped uh, potential in these characters like the one thing i will say about batman characters whether they're so random and obscure to some like that's really believable right off the bat is that a lot of them are very mental broken characters and they have a decent backstory where you can mess with it i I think the premise of arkham allows that like you use arkham as kind of the kind of like a like in baseball right you have like triple a double a you just feed that into the major leagues arkham could be that in terms of the world they're creating and just deliver characters for whatever show or movie i don't agree Absolutely. I totally, totally agree with you, Eddie. Uh, with with uh, the Batman, though, I actually had a question then for, for everybody or kind of just Batman in general. So Sean had mentioned this was in his top three. So first, Sean, I'm actually curious, what would be your top one? What would be your number one Batman movie to this day? I, I guess that question I'd present to everybody. And then going back to that, yes, we've had six actors portray Batman on screen. Uh, maybe your favorite Batman movie doesn't actually include your favorite Batman. So just, I guess, rating the Batmans. How, how would you rate the Batmans and what would be your favorite Batman movie? Mine is the one with Pee Wee Herman when he came out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Joni Chu fans will know that cameo. But um, no, the Tim Burton, Michael Keaton, I think, you know, uh, it was what, 89, 90? You know, first yeah. movie of its kind. 
Okay, I, or one of them. Um, Jack Nicholson, Joker, probably one of the best villains ever. That one, and then Christopher Nolan's uh, Dark Knight, like going back into the League of Shadows and all that, was definitely my fave, my favorite. And then this one, because this one, because I love anything that has to do with like, mystery and detective work. And and I love anything new art. And I just, this movie kept reminded me of Dick Tracy, you know? Mm. And I thought that was pretty cool. Although, side note, my favorite looking Batman is Ben Affleck's Batman. I think that's the closest to the cartoon. I just wish his cape was dark blue with the gray body. But that's my, fi- but he's my favorite looking Batman. I'll go, Nick. I'm still thinking. <laughs> uh, you know, all right. So, he, you know, what was I? I was crap, 10 when the first Batman came out? Like, it was, there was something about that as a kid. It was the coolest thing on earth. Um, it's like I have childhood memories that are just amazing from it. Um, but I do think the non Batman is top. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I would go Nolan, then I would go Michael Keaton, and then I would put this Batman. The other is uh, George Clooney. I would put them all. Well, I thought Val Kilmer was decent. I mean, yeah, George Clooney's horrible, so <laughs> as Bruce Wayne, but I mean, you I don't like the Batman black card. No, <laughs> uh, the you know, it's actually kind of funny. It's the- not- that Val Kimmer was bad. It's, these weren't that good, in my opinion. Like that's when they started to get a little too wild for me. Yeah, I, I can see that. It's kind of funny though. That summer in 1995, uh, Nick's older sister was working at the local theater in Temple City, and I remember mm-hmm. like going with Nick and his brother Tad and my brother Fernando. Like we saw that maybe like three or four times. That that particular Batman, Batman Forever, because we got to see it for free. We didn't. <laughs> we didn't have to pay. So so that was, I had a cool memory of just, I mean, even today, like, yes, it's got its tons of faults, but I mean, I can still go back and be entertained by that particular one. But if you're asking me, like, what's my favorite Batman? I mean, it's, it's really close between the dark Knight and the the first one with Michael Keaton, the first one, Michael Keaton, like Nick mentioned, I mean, got to see as a little kid when I was nine years old, that was one of the first movies I saw in the theaters ever that I can remember. I mean, I might've gone when I was really young, but that's, I can distinctly remember seeing Mm -hmm. that one in the theater. And just loving Jack Nicholson's portrayal. And then as far as uh, the Bruce Wayne Batman, um, yeah, definitely Christian Bell is probably my favorite. But I agree with Sean that uh, I think Ben Affleck like, changed a lot of people's minds. I think he was uh, better than people were anticipating. And, and in the case of uh, Pattinson, I think that that case as well, that I think maybe uh, maybe some people haven't changed their minds like Nick. But <laughs> I think in general, uh, it was better than we were expecting. But yeah, d- definitely for me, Christian Bell, I think was the, the best portrayal, I think, so far that we've seen. And I'm split on this question because it's like, it's so hard to just narrow it down. Like, so the best Batman movie, I'm hurting right now. Like I'm fighting my childhood in two different ways here. I mean, 89 Batman and The Dark Knight. Uh, it's such a tussle in my head of what is, the best Batman movie, and I, and and they both have arguably the Joker's that you really like too. It's not like there was a different bad guy that I can okay, I can at least mentally break away. I have two Jokers I really like too, so that that's what makes it hard. So I unfortunately can't really pick. You can ask me today, Dark Knight, I'll say, and then tomorrow I'm gonna say Keaton. But I will say my favorite Bruce Wayne is Michael Keaton's Bruce Wayne. My favorite Batman, though, that is actually between Ben Affleck and uh, Battinson. That's what I'm going to call him. Is, uh, those two Batmans right there. I, I just love because you get the Dark Knight comic come out, and there you go, Ben Affleck. He's literally the grizzled, jaded Batman who, who I mean, he basically tells Alfred, I, everyone, I lost hope 20 years of Gotham. How many good people are left? Like he's literally on his way out mentally where he doesn't care anymore. And then you have Bat, uh, Battinson, I'm just going to call him that, is he's on the flip end where he's just starting. And he's realizing, do I do vengeance or do I bring hope to these people? 
I'm trying to figure this out because what's what is Batman worth to me at this point? And I think psychologically, those two Batmans, I really like because it showed vulnerability because all the other Batmans, even uh, Christian Bale's Batman Begins, he's already with it. Like mentally halfway through the movie, he's already got it down. Like he seems pretty with it. He's not all like jacked up in the head anymore. It's about just completing the mission at that point and facing his demons. But the other two are jaded from the beginning or at the end of their careers. And I think that's why I, I like that. It's just a, it's a risk. And it, I, for me, it, it got me in terms of like liking those Batmans. But Bruce Wayne, it's Michael Keane, man. That guy is suave. That guy was already losing hair. And you still didn't judge him by that. You just looked at him. He wasn't even fit. Like I had no six pack and you accepted him as a billionaire playboy who's getting the hottest like reporter and he's going to go face Jack Nicholson's <laughs> Joker. So that's where I'm at. Mm. You know, it's kind of interesting because like, I mean, when I was nine, when the movie came out, I mean, I wasn't really paying that much attention to like, you know, the uh, message boards. Oh, of course, actually the internet didn't exist back then either. But my understanding was that uh, Michael Keaton wasn't well received initially as well when it was announced. Yeah, that he, I heard it was like, controversial. controversial. Controversial, like he had just done the movie Mr. Mom, so kind of seen more as a comedic actor, and then he had just done Beetlejuice as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. uh, but I mean, yeah. he, he changed his people's minds, so I mean, it almost kind of seemed like that's a pattern that the, the the executives at Warner Brothers tend to pick like actors who maybe don't really fit the mold, but then all of a sudden like they're on screen, and wow, they actually did a great job. So, except for Clooney. <laughs> Oh, let's um, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> that is like Wait. the the bastard child in the family. <laughs> like, oh right, no, he's still there. No, no. We should give him a, a food a food plate so he doesn't. Play. Does it doesn't Clooney Batman suit have nipples? The bat nipples oh, actually yeah. started with Batman Forever. That was hilarious. Where, yeah, they started doing that little montage where they throw on the buckle and the cape and then nipples and butt. I don't know. I don't know how that happened, but like I was... said, eh. <laughs> the, ac- the actors are good themselves. Eh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think, but I think that's a good example of you can make a Batman kind of like Marvel, where it's very comic, very not so dark and light, and but you can't make Marvel dark. I think like you can the DC movies, like the DC comics and i think if i think of dc or whoever because they just sold dc right warner brothers yeah they're by uh, discovery now yeah discovery so I think it, oh interesting okay yeah so yeah that's so i one think and, uh, i think if discovery goes the route of like joker the last joker and this batman i think they would have um you know tons more success than they've ever had in the past they just got to uh, embrace it you know they're not yeah, to embrace that, like, okay, our movies are better when they're not targeted to, like, nine-year-old kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. I, I think that's yeah, what Disney set the... Yeah, yeah, right? Like, I, I think Disney set the premise with Marvel, like, hey, this is for everybody. So to appease everybody, you can't really pass certain thresholds that other movies can take a risk on. I mean, look at Joker. I mean, that went just from straight R and you can just remove Joker from the title and the character. And that is a movie in itself. It just happens to be about the Joker. And that kind of sprung board, I think, Batman. I think it, that allowed Batman to be on its own right, you know, and to allow the grit to kind of push the buttons. I mean, these are some modern time issues that they kind of touched on. It's like, you know, it, it got there, it punched some nerves. Well, I want to throw a question to you guys, if you don't mind. Oh, sure. Go ahead, Eddie. Yeah. With um, with now this Batman in the books, what is your favorite Batman baddie, your, the bad guy that you've most enjoyed? And it, it could be just the character or maybe the actor playing the character, however you want to answer that, from all these movies. Movies only. Who's your, been your favorite Batman bad guy? Okay, well, when you put in the only movies only, I mean, I was really just about to say the Joker, particularly. I really like Mark Hamill's like portrayal, but you said movies only, so I won't. Do yeah, well. oh, no, Mark I didn't, Hamill, I didn't mean he's a, he's an all our. Yeah. <laughs> um, from from the movies, yeah, um, the 
the Tim Burton villains I thought were really great. So so you had uh, Jack Nicholson as Joker and then Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman and Danny DeVito as Penguin. Uh, but then also I really liked uh, uh, Liam Neeson's Raul Al Ghul from uh, uh, mm. Batman Begins. And then Heath Ledger's Joker. I don't know. It's really hard to pick from the movie specifically which one, but probably you just have to maybe just pick Joker as being Batman's most iconic uh, villain. You know, this is this is very very controversial, but hear me out. Oh my God, yeah, I don't know. It's my favorite. It's probably maybe tied. Arnold Schwarzenegger. No, no, <laughs> just uh, Suicide Squad's Jared Leto's Joker. Uh, I, I like that. didn't mind him. So. The thing is, I thought, like, well, it's David Ayer. First of all, they screwed over David Ayer. He took him out just about everything he wrote for the movie, right? So they did. And for those who don't know, I mean, he won an Oscar for Training Day. He did Fury, uh, oh, End of Fury. Watch, you know, Fury with Brad Pitt and Michael Pena. Um, anyway, so... It was very David Ayer esque, and I thought David Ayer wrote it as if if Batman took place in L.A., you know. And I think he made Joker into like a really modern, like gangster slash narco. And I thought it was really cool that he was portraying. At least I saw that we kind of portray a modern take on Joker, like you know, in a in a real metropolitan area in in like real life. Yeah. So that's why I really like that portrayal of uh, Jared Leto's Joker. Sad fact, they took off over 30 minutes of Jared Leto from the movie alone. They really butchered that Suicide mm. Squad movie. That sucks. All right, Nick, you're up. Who's your baddie? Yeah, it's a hard no. Ledger's hard to come by then you know i fan at the time but uh i love danny doe and you know he's like a dumpty penguin how can <laughs> not like it <laughs> he bleeds blue <laughs> <laughs> right i loved it oh man i'm like this is wild mm-hmm. uh, when as a young kid yeah, it, scene when like uh he, he bites you know his nose and blood just squirts out everywhere <laughs> At the, at the mayor, right. uh, like committee <laughs> party or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I like how he has an apartment right upstairs. He just goes upstairs, <laughs> like, hey, uh, there's a party downstairs to decide the future of golf. Benjamin <laughs> Copper. Uh, no, Joaquinix Joker. I think I don't think anyone would do. I don't think he was better, but I think that was pretty maze amazing take on it. And I think the movie was, like you said earlier, Eddie, like the movie was on its own. Remove the Joker. It's a great movie. But I don't know. That was all surprisingly great. His performance. It, 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 was, it was something, man. I mean, that guy lost weight for that movie. Everything you needed to look like the guy. It's crazy. Yeah. Have you guys seen I, the deleted scene of the Joker from this le- recent Batman movie? No, no. It do yourselves a favor mm-hmm. at the end of this podcast, and whoever's listening to this, pause, watch it, and then come right back and continue on with this episode. Because like, it is five minutes of the greatest deleted scene I feel in a from a Batman movie. It's I get why they didn't t- they didn't put it in, but do yourselves a favor and watch that. It is quality interaction between Batman. And the future Joker. It is a really good clip. <laughs> Very cool. Definitely have to check that out. Uh, anything else? With that on, or are you ready? Is to, on uh, HBO Max. Or oh, I'm sorry. Sean, go ahead. Oh, just sorry, YouTube. On, uh, he put it out that a, Sunday of release because he wanted to just show people because people were asking questions. Is that the Joker in the movie or not? And, and basically, he said in a quick uh, tweet, "Oh, um, this is just." Uh, this is no one's anyone yet. Like, like Penguin's not really Penguin yet. No one's really anyone yet except Batman. You know, he's the only established right. name per se. So I'm not going to say he is or isn't, but I put that in there to kind of hint as Arkham is kind of this, this, this breeding ground of 
characters you're going to see in the future, you know, and, and whatever media content that they give it to us. But like that deleted scene, I, ah, man, definitely do yourselves a favor. It's a, before you sleep tonight, man. Very cool. Definitely uh, check that out. My apologies for interrupting you, Sean. I guess sometimes with the Zoom recording, like we don't know who someone's about to talk. So I just kind of talked over you. Oh, <laughs> um, uh, no, you're good. You're good. Uh, anything else with Batman or are we ready to uh, move on to uh, Multiverse of Madness? I'm good. I could talk about both forever. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> Okay, so so interesting thing with Multiverse of Madness that also kind of went through a little bit of its uh, director shuffles, as it were. Like uh, the original director, I guess Scott Derrickson, who did the first one, uh, was scheduled to uh, uh, direct. And back then, when they announced him and brought him on stage at Comic Con back in 2019, that's when they also announced that uh, Elizabeth Olsen would be reprising her role as uh, the Scarlet Witch, or technically as Wanda at the time, not not the Scarlet Witch yet, because WandaVision hadn't come out. Uh, but then I guess uh, Derrickson decided to drop out, but they brought in Sam Raimi, who I thought was an excellent choice if they wanted to maintain like the horror elements. Uh, Raimi already having experience doing the, the Tobey Maguire trilogy of Spider-Man movies, but also better known or I mean, better known, I'm sorry, also known for doing the Evil Dead movies. So the, the horror aspects of Doctor Strange were really cool. In fact, I, I mean, my wife's actually just listening right now over here on the, the side. There were several times where she grabbed my hand like really hard because some of the jump scares that were going on in the movie. So I thought it was well done. I, I, I loved it. I thought Doctor Strange was really good. But that being said, some of my friends and family have mentioned they were slightly disappointed with uh, the amount of cameos that we did get or that we did not get. So I wanted to, I guess, mention it just general conversation for, for you three. Uh, what were your thoughts for uh, Multiverse of Madness when you saw it? Really quick, with zombie uh, Mr. Doctor Strange, <laughs> I had to bite my tongue because it yeah. looked like real. It looked like Thriller and Two Face had a baby, <laughs> like Michael Jackson's Thriller and Two Face. I couldn't. I had to bite my tongue, <laughs> so I, just, I needed to see that. I hadn't thought of that. Oh man, I don't think I can ever watch that movie again. <laughs> I'm gonna hear MJ from now on. Uh, yeah, the movie was okay, but all eh, it should have been called one. Yeah, actually, I, I'm gonna. Echo I don't know. Mix, so. I no, think Sean. one of my favorite. I think one of my favorite parts, and Eddie and I have talked about this, was I think the cameos were dope. I mean, Professor X at the yellow wheelchair, <laughs> cool. But I think we're also reminded of our, one of our favorite um, childhood video games, Mortal Kombat, <laughs> with all the death scenes. You know, like it was. <laughs> we just need to hear like finish it, fatality. The you fact know, like, that they I, were actually letting us see in detail how they died. I don't think anyone expected that. No one's ever... Did, the mouse never allows death like that, you know? And I'm so, I'm so surprised, like, wow, they're really showing... They're showing it. I mean, execution style. And, you know, I was surprised. I mean, I'll give them their kudos. They threw me off on those. I was not expecting deaths in detail. You know, it's kind of, kind of interesting. I know a lot of times uh, with these big budget like comic book movies and uh, not even that, that just that, like the sci-fi with Star Wars and everything that there's been lots of director turnover because I'm assuming that there's been clashes with the studio execs and the directors like, okay, I want it this way. No, you can't have it that way. So people drop out. Um, it's happened a lot of times for, for Star Wars actually. And, uh, and it was probably interesting that maybe Derrickson, the original director had some of those, uh, uh issues i guess maybe i mean i don't know why exactly he left but but yeah like you said eddie i mean it's pretty cool that i guess from what i can see on screen considering how much horror expertise uh, sam raimi has i think everything he wanted to put into the movie was there so that was pretty cool to see i think i will say though and um i had mentioned this to sean and a couple others that you know, this movie compared to, let's say just the first one, right? Like, let's just, just Dr. Strange 1, Dr. Strange 2. I feel it's apple and oranges. Um, I really liked how they brought a character I didn't really know about too much in the first one. They build his world. They show us the mysticism of, 
of magic and how they incorporate that into the universe and how it's to make sense in future movies. Like, why does he matter? Why is he powerful? Or why is he going to be the, the pending Supreme Sorcerer or Sorcerer Supreme? But in this movie, like, I feel like the biggest issue I had with this movie, which kind of, I saw it twice just to see, do I still have the same issues with this movie? As, uh, it's not a bad movie, but I will say that the pacing of this movie, I never got to mentally digest scenes. I felt it was just five minutes. Okay, next clip, five minutes. Okay, go here, five minutes, this, this. And I felt like they never got to like just focus on some detail, like America Chavez, right? Like they, it, she comes from a, like a Themyscira. So Themyscira, for those who don't know, it's like, that's where Wonder Woman's from. She's uh, like an, uh, like an, uh, it's part, they're like all sort of demigods or Amazonians. It's all female. And uh, America Chavez kind of comes from a world like that. But what is presented in the movie is really not that. And they didn't describe why she dresses the way she dresses, um, why the star is a symbol, aside from maybe that's just how she warps through universes and it kind of looks like a star. Like, I didn't really get anything beyond superficial stuff about her. I felt they just force fed, here's America Chavez. Okay, here's her quick backstory, yada, 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 and a memory image, you know, that they showed as like a recording. And then that was it. Uh, it. Like, you know, that whole walk when they were in that future, that that opposite world, I guess, like the futuristic opposite world, they were there for like 10 minutes. It felt like they just kind of forced that some quick stuff, but yet they didn't explain other things. So later on down the line, it just kind of felt, I don't know, I felt a little empty on this one. I felt like I had way more questions of what are we watching or what did I watch then? Oh my gosh, that was a strange movie. That was Dr. Strange. Uh, I didn't get that, I guess. I don't know, fair point. That's a very good point. Yeah, uh, I, I would agree that again, we didn't know, we didn't learn a whole lot about America Chavez just yet. Uh, I'm assuming that we will. Um, the, what I've heard and rumors speculating is that they are going to be working on a, a Young Avengers project, which would be pretty cool. So I guess there's there's opportunities to present more of her backstory and see who she is more. Of, but uh, but yeah, yeah. Anyone else had some more thoughts? Uh, there's a few things that I wanted to discuss, but I didn't want to take up the time. I guess you guys wanted to mention something first. I'll point now to Sarah brought up a couple things. Uh, one, she seemed somewhat didn't feel it wasn't a Doctor Strange movie, hence my joke earlier. Should have been called a WandaVision, but which. Uh, so she noticed that, and she was kind of disappointed, really likes Doctor Strange. Um, she also pointed out, out like, um, one able to just beat the two male superheroes without even an eye, but then the two female superheroes she struggled with a little more she was like why that i'm like okay you know it's the mcu trying to push more females but it's their their business uh and then yet yeah, zombie she was like ah, the zombie thing interests me uh so when we left, like she thought it was okay but she pointed out more negative things right away and have more questions than like, oh, that was just good and that part. So just. Well, I, I agree with you, Nick, uh, that, yeah, I, I would have liked to have seen uh, uh, Mr. Fantastic hold his own a little more. In fact, that we got to see Mr. Fantastic debut live action for the first time was really oh awesome. Gosh. I want to touch a little more on that. Um, Black Bolt's death, I thought was really awesome and cool. Uh, I never was. <laughs> oh, man. Blow his own brain. What up, mouth? Up his mouth. <laughs> uh, yes, for, for those who don't know, I mean, there was the Inhumans TV show that was on ABC, and it was really a bad show. It wasn't very good. But uh, the character Black Bolt, I, I didn't, in the comics, I didn't watch the Illuminati, Illuminati, uh, was on the show. <laughs> the show, it's not worth checking out, but what's kind of cool about the show, just really quickly, is it, a lot of it was filmed in Hawaii. So all the times that I've gone to like, you know, visit my in-laws who live there, it's like, oh, I recognize that area. Yeah, like downtown Honolulu, like right there. 
So for that reason, I kind of like watching it, but really you can skip over the Inhumans. But that being said, if Marvel Studios gets their hands on it and they do it justice to the Inhumans, I think they can do it much better than the TV counterparts did. Uh, but going back to really quick to Mr. Fantastic, uh, for long longest time, it had been rumored, or I guess like fan casted, that John Krasinski yeah. of The Office would play People him. People have been wanting him, even I have. I think he just looks the part. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I mean, back in the day, he was almost cast as Captain America. Uh, he was on the shortlist before Chris Evans got the role. And I guess uh, he told the story on Jimmy Kimmel or some other late night host person that he just saw Hemsworth. I guess like because he had been there for like for whatever reason in the, like the, the offices and just said, you know what, I, I can't do this, man. Look at this guy. <laughs> so I, it's pretty cool that we did get to see him. In fact, I think he's perfectly cast if they are assuming going to move forward with uh, him as um, the Earth 616 version of uh, Mr. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I think um, we're going to get we're going to go deep a little bit here, guys. So I really feel they they introduced him because i think a the the fantastic four director dropped out the week of the movie release of dr strange yeah and no one knew why except you know they give the the traditional bs explanation of oh uh creative differences but we like to work in the future and well, they still might. The oh, sorry to interrupt you, Eddie, but uh, the, the director for the Fantastic Four, he had also done the Spider-Man movies from MCU. Right. So potentially if, if Sony, I guess they have just as much say as Marvel Studios does. If like, hey, we want that fourth Tom Holland movie right now, then I guess that one might take precedence. So that would be, I guess, uh, an explanation that, yes, they're going to maybe fast track uh, Spider-Man 4 faster than we think. But I think that was all just uh, like, a, like a veil because they wanted to have him officially move out because I bet you they're going to announce Krasinski is going to direct Fantastic Four as he's been so rumored to. And the fact that he appeared, I think it's like almost a foregone conclusion now. I think they're going to announce him as the new director. He's going to write and direct the Fantastic Four that that he's been rumored to do. Like it's been a thing, especially with, with uh, A Quiet Place 1 and 2 being such a huge hit. Mm-hmm. that he's shown he has the chops to actually write a movie and you don't even need crazy graphics you can just make just making a little simple sound scary so if you can bring that kind of visual and into the fantastic four i think it's it could be a real cool sci-fi movie because that's what it's about like sci-fi fantastic four is like the original uh, x-men they are the original mutants you know and with him now in the universe officially, because he's in it, uh, even if it's a, a different version we see him in, Loki set the premise with these timelines that with, uh, with uh, oh, what's his name? The, the baddie that we're going to see, Conqueror. He's oh, uh, Conqueror. Kang the Conqueror. Yeah. Kang the Conqueror. He's a descendant of... Uh, oh, Franklin Richards, their son. Yeah. Yeah. Franklin, yeah. So yeah. I think that's going to be a big interaction, maybe through Quantum Mania or another movie where they involve all those timelines. Uh, I think that was the big little bridge right there, cameo to introduce him. So now it's safe to start working on the repercussions of what we saw in the Loki series. Because I've been waiting to see what is, when does Loki kind of kick in to these movies, mm-hmm. especially multiverse stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I would love to see uh, his wife, Emily Blunt, be cast as uh, Sue, Sue, Sue Richards. Really cool I too. think she's going to be in it. She's the other big fan cast. That, yeah. <laughs> but who knows? Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, so, yeah, it's kind of interesting. So uh, Nick and I did a, a show uh, uh, last month or two months ago, back in, maybe back in March, where we were talking about anticipated movies that we were looking forward to the most. I had picked uh, Multiverse of Madness as my most anticipated movie of the year. And though I did enjoy it, I mean, uh, maybe, yeah, there was some letdown part of it. But for the most part, I enjoyed the movie we got. Uh, But I am looking forward to what we're going to see throughout the rest of the year. So that should be pretty exciting, too. Uh, Anything else with uh, Multiverse of Madness that you guys have or any other things you wanted to bring up, discuss? Uh, What did you think about the end credits? Oh, the end credits was pretty cool. But actually, it it did get slightly spoiled for me, though. I'm a little disappointed about that. So, oh, so, so, so someone's gonna get, t- get surprised at least. 
<laughs> yeah, so someone's gonna tell uh, um, uh, Charlize Theron to stay off of Twitter. <laughs> oh no, because like guess she she kind of inadvertently spoiled it. In fact, I don't I don't follow <laughs> her, but I was just looking through Twitter really fast, thinking, okay, man, I can look really quick. I, I it's my own fault for going on social media. Uh, but, you know, sometimes they'll put like a topic or someone's talking about something that you're interested in. Yeah. So you get like that. So even though I don't follow her, I all of a sudden see a picture like, oh, it's her saying, oh, the cat's out of the bag. And her like as uh, Clea. I'm like, oh, man, come on. Yeah. <laughs> but but that being said, it is, it is going to be cool. Like I did a little more research about her character because I don't know a whole lot, but uh, her, her character is supposed to be pretty cool. I guess let me ask uh, for any of you guys is uh, what the multiverse of madness now in the books, right? Because this is the latest MCU movie that's kind of bridging all the other content. Where do you guys think like we're going with this? Are we just kind of doing individual movies to kind of, hey, this is where everyone's kind of at right now? Kind of like, uh, like Love and Thunder is another one coming up later this year. You think these are just movies to kind of just set the president, the president of okay, these are where our heroes are now. Before we get into some other team of movie, uh, we got to kind of establish these characters again. Uh, do you feel that Doctor Strange is, he kind of got his setup for what's to come? Like, do you guys feel you kind of know where he, we're going with him in the future? Or do we kind of feel like, I still don't know what's going on with him from when I, from before I saw this movie and now after? Um, I don't know if I, I, I think I would be the the second part, which you just said, Eddie. I don't know if I have the feeling we know exactly where it's going. There's lots of fan speculation and that we could potentially see uh, multiversal wars where like they're fighting other characters, like other variants of themselves or something like that. Uh, there's a, a, a popular story uh, called Secret Wars, which is a lot of like uh, shenanigans mm-hmm. with Doctor Doom, who they can use now, which is cool. So now that we're starting to see the, the Fox characters finally get incorporated because I mean, the deal went through back in 2019, but I guess they had to, I mean, COVID kind of messed things up for everybody. So we're just now getting these characters into the movies. So I suspect we'll see something like that. But at the same time, I think we're kind of seeing more of establishing these characters, especially newer characters that they're using. Like actually just uh, today, they launched the, the, the trailer for She-Hulk. Uh, so, and then Moon Knight just, just finished, wrapped up on Disney+. Plus. So we're introducing all these new characters that they can use. And now that they can use like the Defender characters like Daredevil and Luke Cage. Um, so I think it's going to be more of like establishing who everybody is. And then I think we're going to kind of see things kind of crash into each other. All the stories kind of merge into each other. So I think we're going to take a little bit longer to get to where they're going is what I guess I'm trying to say. My prediction is that just like me, you Star Wars try to push an agenda. Star Wars sucks now. Uh, they're also trying to push an agenda for you and slow, like with the she holder. Even Sarah was like, that That looked dumb. That, that was stupid. And I'm like, okay. And you kicked her out of it. But I think they're not trying to tell a good story at the moment. I think they're trying to push agendas. So slowly, uh, I see myself losing interest, even with Thor. If some of the rumors are true, yeah, just not storytelling as much. Seems like that's my prediction for the future of the MCU. Before Sean jumps in on this, I I want to do uh, I want to kind of echo that. I you're not the first person I've heard that from, like that kind of opinion too. And I I I, I see that Nick, uh, even me, like the shoehorning of things just to you know, just to be inclusive should not overtake story. You know, if the character is meant to be a certain way, regardless of whether they're, whatever their affinity is to, whatever gender, whatever, like look at Jim Gordon. Jim Gordon doesn't have to be a white dude. He was black in this movie, but no one second guessed it because the character Jim Gordon was respected and he was still honored in the way where it's still Jim Gordon. And you can do that in these movies and not lose sight of the story or the purpose of a character. And, and I'm just gonna jump on what you said, like, yeah, man, like 
I feel, especially with Star Wars, which above all else, I mean, that is like, I bleed Star Wars. And it's like, it just hurt to see the mishandling of that franchise in the end, how they did it. Yeah, they kind of bounced back a little with the shows, but the movies, uh, that's that's the bread and butter. That's where we're, that's the event, you know? And uh, I, I kind of feel that in uh, these later MCU movies, the early ones, no. And you can see a big difference in attitude in terms of their how the treatment was even the first up to, even up to uh, Infinity War. The movies before Infinity War to what it is post Infinity War. Uh, is the, the treatment of characters to story, it, it, it's, it's kind of, it gets a little cloudy and it's unfortunate because I think you lose sight of why we're all there in the first place, you know, and uh, we shouldn't have to just shoehorn ideals like real world ideals or just so everyone can feel like, oh, okay, I'm in it. Like, you don't have to do that. I think that's the fantasy of these stories, right? Is we get to dislodge ourselves from here and enjoy the, the fantastic worlds that are created without having to be like, all right, now let's bring some real world agendas in it. Like, no, that's why we go watch the movie to get away from all that, you know? So I, I get it, man, I really do. I, yep. I've been sensing that too. I was just gonna ask, do you guys know, I mean, different subject, if they're gonna do a Daredevil series again with this cameo in Spider-Man? I haven't heard anything official yet, but uh might get this is for sure he will be involved very soon, hopefully. Um the the She-Hulk show, I guess there's speculation that he might pop up there because it's, she's a lawyer oh. too. Uh but yeah, I definitely want to see Daredevil sooner uh rather than later. And I, I think that's probably gonna happen soon. Uh that would be really cool to see him team up with Spider-Man because they've had a, a close friendship in the comics over the years. So that's what I would kind of like to see uh Spider-Man and Daredevil team up in some capacity, most probably Spider-Man four, uh taking on the New York uh, underground with the Kingpin involved. That's that's why I kind of it's just uh, fan speculation on my part that I would like yeah. to see no, given I think that you're right. Characters I, I, now. Especially with She-Hulk uh, you know her backstory. I mean, it's a perfect catapult for Daredevil to get included in more often. Uh, I mean, he's a lawyer. She's a lawyer, I believe. And you know, the lawyers of mutants, I think they are, or of the heroes. I think he's gonna jump in there, get a little more shine, and then then I think after maybe one cameo, I, th- I, don't, I don't think he's gonna be in more than one episode of She-Hulk. And then I, I feel the next thing we'll see him is like in a movie. Same thing with uh, like Blade. We heard his voice at the end of one of the uh, bank uh, credits. Yeah. 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 So I think it's all going to, especially with Moon Knight, I think it's all going to, you got to be that patient bunch of, like you said, COVID pushed it back. I think next year we're finally going to start seeing like that new Avengers team uh, come up. And I think Daredevil definitely is going to be one of them for sure. Yeah. Well, cool. Uh, anything else? Uh, are we good to wrap up or anything else you guys want to mention, discuss, talk about? Oh, really quick. What did you guys think about Catwoman? Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman. Oh, we, we didn't even bring up her, huh? Yeah, because oh, I, I I think I was telling Ellie what, Eddie, what, I, lo- what I really liked about her was they didn't like try to like overly sexualize her or anything. And it's funny because the way they portrayed her, like she really does feel like she's a stray cat. You know, and she had great chemistry with um, Rob Pattison. I thought there, I thought that was a great fit for for that character. Yeah, their side arc was awesome. She has that new Fifty Two vibe, you know, like uh, they gave her a new look in the new Fifty Two, and where she's going with that, and that's with the with she Catwoman with the shorter hair, right? Like she right, had, right, okay. and uh, just the updated backstory that she has connected to the mob a little more from when she was a kid. So they touched on that. In the movie and it's a, it was really nice to see that developing relationship and uh they're back and forth you know and how she goes to uh what, what to what was the city she goes to night haven or something like the blood haven yeah, i think so yeah and you know who you know that's like a future city where you know nightwing ends up being in the future so it was really nice touch like a little world they're creating there you know well, they did, I guess, because yeah, it's presented that she's going away. But my understanding was Zoe Kravitz was uh, signed on for the sequel. So I guess we'll, we'll see her back probably in some capacity for the next one. 
But uh, yeah, very cool. Uh, she did all else? right. And oh, sorry, Nick, and well, I thought she did all right. And then she, oh, Nolan passed me up because I'm black. Like, uh, all right, whatever. Oh, is that a thing from the other one? She claimed that uh, she got passed in previous movie because she's black. Like, uh, that was a know. while ago. I don't know. I, that was I, the reason, uh, I don't but, think she was just ready as an actor back then. I mean, the first movie I saw her because she's not that old, right? No, she's still pretty young. No, I know. So, so back then, she probably would. Yeah, been I agree. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, the first movie I saw her in was Dope. If you guys ever seen that movie, it was kind of like a yeah. semi indie film, and she like that was her first major role. So like, even then, like you could tell she's like a fresh puppy. Like in terms of like acting, like she didn't suck, but you could see, oh, there's potential, but she wasn't, oh my gosh, like a standout actor in that movie. But she had she played a role, but they gave her the line set and she delivered well. But I don't think for that magnitude of a movie franchise, especially at that time for the third installment, the trilogy, she wasn't ready for that. I, there, it's not about race. I, I feel it's definitely about the experience to handle the pressure and to play the role that a lot of people have an expectation on. And you have to take all the heat, regardless of how good you are, you're going to take the heat. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, I think I, I thought they cast it well. I actually like that. Uh, uh, Anne Hathaway as a camera woman in that one. I think for what they gave her, she played it well. And I think that was the right choice for the right time of that movie. But that's also to say, I should like Zoe Kravitz in this one. I think now she's earned enough experience to play a, a role of this that's big as Catwoman. I think I, I look forward to more of her. I definitely say that. I, I think for what they gave her, she did it well. And, you know, it. I mean, like Robert Pattinson, I was able to kind of let go of that, <laughs> that image of Harry Potter in and twilight you know and coming out of the closet are you coming out of the closet and now what are you doing here <laughs> boy Across the world there, there was enough valentine's i spent where you, you have no choice and you just have to watch <laughs> what she wants to watch <laughs> but not to say i did not low-key i didn't mind it i will say this i know this is totally about um batman and uh dr strange but Man, even in this movie, from Twilight to now, Robert Pattinson is never getting a role where he smiles. Jesus Christ, just smile, man. Just smile in a movie. Make me feel you have a soul. But maybe that's why he got the Batman. Uh, he got he got casted. He played the perfect damage goods that we all need. Soulless. Soulless. Soulless Batman. You're not my father, Alfred. And he marches away, Batman. And I think that's what we needed. <laughs> very cool very cool okay well if there's nothing else i think we're good to go ahead and wrap up and let's say anyone else had anything last minute bring up it was a pleasure hanging out with you guys uh, it was it was nice seeing you guys and just chopping it up a little bit uh, nerding out i really appreciate these kind of topics they're fun oh absolutely eddie i will definitely be doing this uh in the future i mean i love this podcast since i started it uh once a week i'm doing an episode so we'll definitely get everyone together just to chat and I'd love to actually, when you get a chance, we just do a solo episode with you. Just uh, catch up on uh, your career, family, stuff like that. I think it'd be pretty fun, too. Okay, awesome, cool. Man. If there's nothing else, then I think we'll go ahead and uh, wrap up for tonight. So you've been listening to the Cassie for Fun podcast. Okay, thanks, everyone. Bye.